Hello, my name is Russell Bowyer and I represent Bowfin Property and today I'm going to be talking about how many months mortgage arrears before repossession in the UK. What I'm going to talk about today is a healthy property market in your area and whether that affects being repossessed or not. Also, how many months mortgage arrears before repossession. I'm also going to be look at, looking at the first missed mortgage payment. Then I'm going to look at the fear of repossession after going into arrears. Followed by banks, we'll talk about how banks actually don't want to repossess your home. And then I'm going to look at the repossession rules that mortgage lenders must follow. Followed by, or finally closing on, help is at hand if you find yourself in arrears or facing repossession. So let's have a look at just because it's a healthy property market in your area. So just because it is a healthy property market or your property market is buoyant where you live, it doesn't mean that repossessions don't happen because they certainly do. But the key here is to make sure you keep up your mortgage repayments. And the, the clue is actually there. So in other words, if you have a mortgage, your property isn't actually yours. You'll soon find that out when you don't repay or you miss a mortgage payment because you'll have a letter land on your doorstep from your mortgage company and if you continue to miss payments ultimately they can repossess your home so just be aware that while you have a mortgage on your house technically it's not your property repossession uh, in a situation where it's a buoyant market um, can be led from uh, as a result of losing your job or from being made redundant where you don't have the money to keep up the repayments on your mortgage. It can also happen as a result of an injury or perhaps a serious illness like cancer which makes it difficult to work and then if you're not earning any money then you can't keep up your mortgage repayments. But in that situation it does very much depend on how, how your employer will work with you and or whether they will give, or continue to pay you whilst you are either ill or um, recovering from your injury. But of course, if you are able to, speak to your employer to see if they will support you while you're going through this difficult time. Divorce is also another trigger that can lead to repossession. And um, sometimes when you're going through divorce, uh, all the arguments and uh, everything that goes on, it, what can happen is that there's fights over who's going to pay the mortgage and sometimes that leads to the fact that neither party pays it, get into uh, arrears and you end up fighting over the money and none of the money ends up going to the mortgage company and they are left with no, no other choice but to repossess you. But always note that it's never too late to take control and to seek help because it's never too late, except for obviously once they have repossessed you, to take control of the repossession process and to stop it from happening. So let's have a look at how many months mortgage arrears before repossession. But before I do that, the important phrase that you may well be familiar with um, and points to the fact that your home isn't actually yours when you've got a mortgage on it, is the phrase that says, your home is at risk if you don't keep up repayments on a mortgage or other loan secured on it. In other words, if you stop repaying your mortgage, they can repossess that house. It's important to also note that one mortgage payment, one, sorry, one missed mortgage payment does begin the, the repossession process. However, they're not able to start that process until such time as you've missed three uh, payments, the banks have an agreement between them that that's how it will work. However, the actual process starts because what will happen is when you miss a payment, a letter will be automatically produced uh, from the bank and that will land on your doorstep. Of course, subsequent missed mortgage payments will continue the process and, and as you continue to not pay your mortgage, more letters will turn up and if you ignore those, that's the worst thing that you can do. But it, in reality, it will take several months and many missed payments before repossession actually happens. But that shouldn't uh, make you feel, um, or well, that shouldn't leave you thinking, well, you can ignore it because you can't. The sooner you uh, deal with it and the sooner you start speaking with your bank and writing to them, the better. 
because that will go in your favour if it ever gets to court. And talk about courts, in order for a bank to repossess your house, they do actually need to obtain a court order, and in order to do so, they need to go to court, and that in itself will take time to do. But that doesn't mean to say that you rest on your laurels in the meantime. Work with your mortgage lender, correspond with them, and you could, well, you should well be able to stop that from happening. It's also important to understand that banks actually don't want to repossess. They want to work with you, and you know, by you sticking your head in the sand and ignoring the letters, that won't help. So they want you to call them, they want you to write to them, but seek help from outside people, and we'll come on to that in a minute. So the first missed mortgage payment. As already mentioned, it's the first missed payment that triggers the repossession proce process. And by missing a mortgage payment, this is what's called putting you into arrears. In other words, you are behind on your mortgage. But the reality is, you'll not be repossessed with just one missed payment. But with subsequent missed payments, and without a resolution with your lender, they will seek a court order, court order and repossess your property. So in order to stop that, as already mentioned, you need to speak to them as and when the letters come through, read the letters, make sure you understand them, and pick up the phone or write back to them to try and work out some sort of resolution. But if you are able to make good the missed mortgage payments or agree an alternative payment plan, this will of course stop the repossession process from happening in the first place. The fear of repossession after going into arrears. Funnily enough, many repossessions actually happen due to the lack of action through fear. What happens is people stick their head in the sand and ignore the repossession letters. They become like rabbits in a headlight, or rabbits in the headlights, and they don't actually do anything. They, the letters pile up and they don't open them. And of course, that leaves the bank with no alternative but to to actually continue with the repossession process. Please don't let that be yourself. So do that at your peril, and by ignoring the bank, ignoring the letters, and not um, responding to them is the surest way to be repossessed. But please note that even if you make your arrears good, and uh, your credit file will be, will be affected, and that will be on your credit file for the following six years, which will make it very difficult for you to uh, borrow again. Um, but you know, ultimately, that will repair itself as well. The help that we, or I made reference to, would be charities like Step Change. You can speak to them, and they can help you with how to deal with the letters from your bank, what your rights are, what protocol they should follow, and they're there to help. Uh, as a listening ear and to help you get through the process. Citizens Advice is another uh, organisation that can help you, as is sh the Shelter Charity, all of which can help with repossession, how to write to and deal with the bank, and uh, let you know what your rights are in respect of um, whether it's going to court, of the process, making sure that they follow the right protocol, the bankers follow the right protocol, etc. As already mentioned, banks actually don't want to repossess your home. Firstly, for them, it's bad publicity. No one wants bad publicity. And the reality is they don't actually want to be in that position where they're keeping people out of their own home. The FCA and the courts expect, expect banks to work with you to avoid repossession. And they have to demonstrate that that's what they've done. And of course, they will keep copies of all the letters that they've sent you, etc., etc., and they will also be looking at how you've responded with the bank, how you've uh, dealt with the bank, and the better that you can work with your, your bank or your lender, the more likely the court will be in your favour when it comes to that, if it ever gets to court. But again, as I've already said, if you fail to act or ignore their letters, you'll let, you will end up having your home repossessed. So please stop that, you know, please don't let that be yourself. The time it takes to repossess will, of course, depend on the lender, how quickly they act, how quickly they send out the letters, but ultimately, um, however fast it takes or how long it takes them to get to the step where they go to court will depend on court availability. And at the moment, courts are very much backed up 
particularly as, as a result of COVID-19 or coronavirus. So it may take some time before it gets in front of the court, but don't let that be something that makes you sit on your laurels because if they have applied to the court, that will eventually come around. And you can stop that from happening by working with the banks and uh, get seeking some help from the likes of step chains, etc. So as I said, seek help, don't ignore the letters, and also try and pay something towards your mortgage. That will be uh, shown in good light, certainly from the court's point of view, and also the lender. At least they'll see that you're making an effort to try and keep your mortgage uh, or make, pay something towards your mortgage. That always um, goes down very well. Let's have a quick look at the rules uh, around repossession that mortgage lenders must follow. So banks have a um, an agreement in place that they can't repossess a home until after three months mortgage arrears have occurred. The lender themselves must also refer you to take independent debt advice, and that advice can be from the likes of step change, um, shelter, etc., etc. But also, you probably also want to seek um, seek help from someone who's regulated by the FCA, who could talk you through how you can perhaps restructure your debt. Um, something that we're not allowed to do because we're not FCA regulated. But if you speak to someone that is, they can help you in the, in this regard. The bank must treat you fairly, but they must also consider any proposals that you make for repaying the mortgage. Uh, which you might do after singing, seeking independent uh, debt advice. Uh, for example, whether that's um, looking at changing how the mortgage is repaid from a repayment mortgage to interest only, repayment holidays, and all these sort of things that you possibly can do or adding the arrears to your mortgage at the end. Um, all of these considerations the bank will take into account and they have to consider them. And by putting those to the bank, uh, and if they ignore them and take you to court, the court look at those themselves, and that may prevent repossession from actually happening, or a court order for repossession to happen happening. The actual letters and communication from the lenders must be easy to understand, and you must respond within a reasonable time frame. But of course, if you don't understand those, that's why you can go to the likes of systems advice or step change, because they will help you to interpret those letters and to uh, work with you in order to work out how you respond. The other thing that you can have a look at see whether you're eligible is to apply for support for mortgage interest. If you've not heard of that before, the, probably the best thing you could do is to do a Google search on those, that word, those words there, support for mortgage interest. Have a look on the, the website that comes up and see if you are eligible for that type of support. Not everyone is, but you might be. And if you have applied for that, during that time, the mortgage lender cannot commence court proceedings because while you're going through that process, it means that you're trying to find support to see how you can keep repaying your mortgage. And as I already mentioned, in order for the bank to repossess you, they have to get a court order. And they'll only be granted such an order so long as they follow correct procedures and protocols, as already explained. If they don't, the court will not order in their favour. But equally, on the other side of that coin, is that you must also show that you've worked as hard as you can and worked with the bank to try and avoid repossession happening. But if you've stuck your head in the sand, ignored all the letters, and not tried to put any proposals forward, the court may be put in a position where they've got no alternative but to order repossession. Also, it's noted that currently during coronavirus or COVID-19, which is happening as I'm um, going, uh, talking right this, at this point, repossessions are actually on hold, and they're on hold at this point until October 2020. But again, don't let this give you any full sense of security because you need to be thinking about how uh, you can start to repay your mortgage once things get back to normal, but also don't um, stop it from, uh, well, don't stop from uh, reaching out to your bank and speaking to them to see what you can do in order to uh, make good any, any arrears, to try and work out how you uh, continue to repay your mortgage and so on, so that once the 
hold is taken away in October this year, or 2020, um, that you are working towards some sort of resolution with the bank. And already alluded to it during the course of um, what I've been talking about here, that help is at hand. Um, and that's the likes of Step Change Charity, Shelter and uh, Citizens Advice. But there are also companies out there that um, are set up to help you. Uh, but make sure that they are registered with the FCA um, and they're a rectal company, of course, to make sure they're working with you to make sure that you are in a position to um, stop the repossession. Also, it's important to point out that you need to help yourself. For anyone to be able to help you, you need to be the person that helps yourself. There's no point in you sticking your head in the sand, because by having your head stuck in the sand, that's no good to anybody, least of all yourself. We can help you too. Um, visit our website and go onto our Contact Us page and reach out to us. It's something that we, we enjoy doing. We enjoy helping people. Uh, we're not a charity, and we're not regulated by the FCA, but we have some creative ideas of how we can help you with your property. Uh, for example, we can uh, take over your uh, over the property and um, alleviate you from all the problems. But it's better that we have a, a direct conversation about your particular particular set of circumstances. If you're listening to this as a podcast, if you uh, go to bofin.co.uk, that's bofin with an F for Foxtrot, B-O-W-F-I-N.co.uk. Or simply, if you do a search on Google for both in property, we should be uh, number one on Google for, for that search. And then simply go onto our Contact Us page if you find yourself in a position where you, you do need some help uh, with someone to perhaps buy your property, uh, to take over your mortgage and um, sort yourself out so that you can um, prevent the repossession from happening and get yourself out of arrears. We have some great ways of helping people do this and it's something we actually enjoy doing. Always have in the back of your mind that banks actually don't want to repossess you and they want to work with you to help prevent it from happening in the first place. Don't look at the bank as uh, the ogres. Don't stick your head in the sand and don't let those letters pile up on your doorstep. Please open them and please act and seek some help. Thank you very much for listening. My name has been Russell Bowyer from Bofin Property and uh, please listen out for our future podcasts or uh, look on YouTube under Bofin Property and also please have a look at some of the other, other articles on bofin.co.uk on our blog and um, I look forward to talking to you again. Have a good day and take care. Bye for now.